We welcome you to the investiture ceremony for the Prefects Council for the academic year 2021 and 2022. The chief guest is Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, consulting editor and lead news anchor of the India Today group. It's my honor to take you through the profile of the chief guest. Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai is an award-winning senior journalist, author and TV news presenter. His latest book, 2019, How Modi Won India, is a national bestseller, as was his previous book, 2014, The Election That Changed India, which has been translated into half a dozen languages. His book, Democracy's Eleven, The Great Story of Indian Cricket, was shortlisted by MCC Lords as Cricket Book of the Year in 2017-2018. With over three decades of journalistic experience in print and television, Mr. Rajdeep is currently the consulting editor and lead news anchor of the India Today group. He was the founder editor of the IBN 18 network, which included CNN IBN, IBN 7 and IBN Lokmat. Prior to that, he was managing editor of both NDTV 24-7 and NDTV India and was responsible for overseeing the news policy for both the channels. He has also worked with the Times of India for six years and was city editor of its Mumbai edition at the age of 26. During his long career in journalism, he has covered major national and international stories, specializing in national politics. He has won more than 50 awards for journalistic excellence, including the prestigious Padma Shri for journalism in 2008, the International Broadcasters Award for coverage of the 2002 Gujarat riots, the Ramnath Goenka Excellence in Journalism Award in 2007, and the 2019 Prem Bhatia Award for political journalism for analysis of the 2019 elections. The first Indian to win the Asian Television Award for talk show and news presentation, he has been news anchor of the year at the Indian Television Academy a record 10 times. In 2020, he was conferred with the Lifetime Achievement Award at the annual New Broadcasting Awards. He has been the president of the Editors Guild of India and was also chosen as a global leader for tomorrow by the World Economic Forum. Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai writes a fortnightly column across several newspapers including the Hindustan Times and Dainik Bhaskar. He has his own blog site and is the third most followed journalist in the world on Twitter. A graduate of St. Xavier's College, he has completed his Masters and LLB from Oxford University and played first-class cricket at Oxford and captained Mumbai schools. We begin with the school song and the school prayer song. The school song, Hey Good Shepherd, our alma mater.
school prayer song, The Lord's My Shepherd. Robin Goenka. Let us pray. O oh dear Good Shepherd, make our school a home away from our home. Make us always feel that we all belong to your family and that the teachers are like our parents. We believe that you speak through them when we listen to them. Give more wisdom. to all concerned with us so that they may guide us always on the right path make us know your presence and power by rewarding and punishing us let us not become proud when we are rewarded and let us not become humiliated when you punish us for our mistakes give us enough strength to forget and forgive as you forgive us our sins we thank you for the shards of blessings on this school for its growth and progress into a big and a good school give us everything to make our lives in this school a happy one this we ask for your love sake amen Great leadership begins with a willing heart, a positive attitude, and a desire to make a difference. 
the words of Mac Anderson. Our captains and prefects who are ready to be sworn in today will learn the ethics of leadership and work together as a team to help one another with humility. They will lead by example as they follow the tradition of raising the standards of the school. Today, they will promise their loyalties towards their alma mater and the students placed under their care. Our office bearers will now be formally invested with the powers they need to carry out their duties with responsibility and dedication. We begin with the school captains, Daivik Locharla Satisha and Mangalam Karupaya. The school vice captains, Meet Dobaria and Ravina Jaiwant Patil. The co curricular captains, Rishabh Narayan Sultania and Diansha Magesh. The games captains, Divyesh Vijaybai Barwad and Nitya Nilesh Danani. The spring house captains, Harshul Ashish Amin and Kanupriya Binkal Chawla. The house vice captains of spring, Rudra Deepak Vaghani and Hashini Prakalya Krishna Kumar. House prefects for spring house from middle school, Kavish Agrawal and Nitisha Chintan Shah. Spring house prefects from primary school, Akhil Shyam and Adya Shri Puvikumar. We next have summer house. The house captains are Haryanth Nagesh and Kashika Sunil Gulabani. The house vice captains of summer, Rupansh Bajaj and Bopana Apurva Anjali. House prefix from middle school, Kevin John Joseph and Adya Harlalka. Summer house prefix from primary school, Nirhav G. Vijayan and V. Meera. We move on to autumn house. The house captains are Adesh Kheria and Kushi Gupta. Autumn House Vice Captains Yash Chauhan and Aishi Mehta. Autumn House Prefects from Middle School Kanishk Magesh and Daparthi Meghna Chaudhary. House Prefects for Autumn from Primary School Vyan Thiago and Kaya Bhavan Zadafia. We next have Winter House. The house captains are Sarans Chauhan and Dennis Evelyn D'Souza. The Winter House Vice Captains A. P. Magirin and Janani Jayantan. The house prefix for Winter House from Middle School Jash Sagar Desai and Diyabin Panara. House prefects for Winter House from Primary School, Tanmay Mithil and Ganeshri Santosh Reddy. We will now have the administering of the oath of office to the office bearers by Mrs. Sheila Alexander, Principal, Good Shepherd International School. The oath of office. I, I hereby solemnly pledge, hereby solemnly pledge on my honor. On my honor that I will carry out, I will carry out the, duties the duties and responsibilities of the office of the Prefects Council, the the Prefects Council faithfully, 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 truthfully, truthfully and, to and to the best of my ability. I shall remain loyal, shall remain loyal to my school, my school, to my superiors, to my superiors and to the students 
placed under me. I further pledge to honor the school law and the code of conduct and to work for the honor and glory of the school. Subjugating self for the common weal. I promise to do my duties in a manner that will serve as an example to others, upholding the dignity of the badge of office and to strive to preserve a sense of humor and above all, be a gentle person. I hereby invest all the members of the Prefix Council for the academic year 2021-2022 and charge you all to honor the pledge you have just taken. Mangalam Karupaya, the girls' school captain, will now address the school. The first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. The last is to say thank you. In between, a leader is a servant. Max Dupree. Good evening to our esteemed chief guest, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, respected co-founder and senior vice president, Ms. Elsima Thomas, president, Mr. Jacob Thomas, principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander, academic council members, teachers, and students. At the beginning of fourth grade, a considerably smaller version of me sat in the back of the Fernil Auditorium while Deepa Miss was announcing that the following roll numbers were the newly elected prefects. My mind froze at roll numbers, for I had a lot of trouble remembering mine in the beginning. Not knowing what a prefect was, I assumed that the people going up front were all going to get into trouble, despite the complete opposite happening. And yet, I crossed my fingers praying that my roll number, which I wasn't sure of, was not called out. And eight years later, a completely different picture can be painted. For that, I couldn't be more grateful to the school management and teachers for giving me this once in a lifetime opportunity. I would like to imagine a leader as a shipwright who can't swim. When the ship starts to sink, the shipwright will have no choice but to keep the ship afloat. Like in life, finding solutions to problems that benefit not one, but many. From now on, let it not be you, me, he or she, but rather we. As Henry Ford once said, coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. Everyone is a leader. We are all our own leaders. Every choice we make reflects on how we lead ourselves. To quote Albus Dumbledore, we all have to face the choice between what is right and what is easy. This year, we will make it our best effort to make the right choices rather than the easy ones. The past 11 months have flown by. It's time we stop worrying about them and decide to move forward. No matter how much time has been wasted, it's never too late to start now. Don't wait for a Monday or the first of a month to start achieving your goals. Sometimes you don't need to see the whole staircase. You just need to take the first step. And lastly, to all the leaders, the challenge of leadership is to be strong, but not rude. Be kind, but not weak. Be bold, but not bully. Be thoughtful, but not lazy. Be humble, but not timid. Be proud, but not arrogant. Have humor without folly. Jim Ron, thank you. Thank you, Mangalam. Now, Devik Locherla Satisha, the boys' school captain, will deliver his address. And then one day, you'll find years have gone behind you. Where you would stand then is decided upon what you do today. Our past has brought us here today. And what we do today decides our tomorrow. Good evening, respected chief guest, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, President, Mr. Jacob Thomas, Co-Founder and Senior Vice President, Mrs. Elsman Thomas, Principal, Ms. Sheila Alexander, Coordinators, Teachers and Students. When I was asked to give a speech as school captain, all the memories of the five years in GSIs etched deep in my mind finally saw the light of day once again. A sudden surge of nostalgia rushed over me. These memories, some slippery, some dim, 
and some clear as crystal have proven to me that life is so much more than what we assume it to be. I feel it is those experiences that have made me believe that a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor man be perfected without trials. Undoubtedly, each memory has a lesson. Learning from them and making it worth of power is in our hands. We work together. I quote, No one can whistle a symphony. It takes a whole orchestra to play it. I unquote. Hachi Lecoq. Teamwork doesn't mean working together to go with the flow, but to grow with the flow. One should understand that in a team, it's a club of perspectives and a mix of skill sets, which only improves the quality of the result we desire to achieve. It's healthy to compete, but imagine how much we can achieve by combining our strongest abilities and working collaboratively. Let this year be about owning our talents, as we are lucky to be surrounded by so many skillful people. Choice, I quote, a man always has a choice if he's willing to lose, I unquote, Cosimo de Medici. Let there be no more of saying, I didn't have a choice, but agreeing to lose all the while learning from those mistakes. After all, mistakes only make you wiser. Do not miss opportunities proposed to you, because when you succeed in the task, it's not only you, but an entire community that is uplifted. We live in an age where all the time individuals require motivation, guidance and purpose to accomplish various tasks successfully. It's only when we as prefects respond to a need that leadership arises. Justin Timberlake in one of his speeches said, true leadership is when you're willing to risk your power and voice so that all of us can be heard. Students require someone who can stand up and show them how to do the things in the right manner to attain the maximum. The ultimate goal of leadership is to bring out the best from the team. Members, it isn't about a title or a designation. It's about impact, influence and inspiration. Before I wind up to all the upcoming leaders, let's lead with integrity, follow with curiosity, serve with generosity, and be with humility. Thank you. Thank you, Devik. The President, Mr. Jacob Thomas, will now deliver the welcome address. Good evening to one and all of you. It is truly an honor to welcome you to, to this year's investiture ceremony for our incoming batch of Prefects Council of the Good Shepherd International School. A very warm welcome to our esteemed chief guest, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai who is an award-winning senior journalist, author, and presently the news presenter with the India Today. Thank you, sir, for speaking to our students. Your conviction for journalism and your passion for cricket are an inspiration to our youth, and I am certain they will enjoy hearing from you today. Welcome to our co-founder and senior vice president, Mrs. Elsima Thomas, to our principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander, to our students, staff, and all of you who are able to join us for today from around the world. And to our present Prefix Council, led by Diani Kunt and Devya Goenka. First off, it is so wonderful to have almost our entire batch of 10th and 12th grade students safely back on our campus. And I'm so glad that the first board exam for IGCSE Hindi took place earlier this week on the 11th. We have looked forward to and have been preparing to welcome them back. And we are equally excited to receive our ninth and 11th grade students over the next few weeks to our campus. Thanks again to the tireless efforts of so many of our teachers and staff for making this possible under severe constraints and impositions. Let me begin by thanking our present Prefects Council for their contributions in an unprecedented year when opportunities were limited and all of our resolve was tested. There is a lot that we had to sacrifice in 2020, and I am so glad that we persevered through it all. Congratulations then to the incoming batch of our 2021-22 Prefix Council. You carry on a long tradition here at GSIS. It is a great honor to be recognized and to be given this responsibility. 
Being a member of the Prefects Council is a great opportunity to grow as individuals and prepare you for the many challenges that no doubt lie ahead of you in your lives. Leaders are not born, they are made. And like many things in life, becoming a leader is a journey and a process of continuous learning and development. I believe you instinctively know whether you're a leader, and that comes from having a genuine willingness and a true commitment to lead others to achieve common, a common vision and goals through positive influence. No leader can achieve anything great or long-lasting all by themselves. Teamwork goes hand-in-hand hand with leadership, for it is about people and for people. There are a number of qualities that make a great leader, and one of the most important of them is integrity. It is the vital ingredient for which character building and, strong, and a strong foundation of values. Leadership takes courage, and your principles and convictions will often be put to the test. So be bold and be prepared to step up as leaders. As members of the Prefix Council, you are also called to be role models to your fellow students. Set high standards for yourself and imbibe values that will strengthen your integrity and your character so that you become role models worth looking up to. And in choosing to become good role models, I find it is important to ask yourselves who your, own role, who your own role models are. Being a good role model also begins with being a mentor, someone who is willing to help others better themselves and achieve higher standards in their lives. I find that the best way to improve at anything in life is to teach it. And there are so many opportunities for you to do just that as members of the Prefects Council. Our present situation in particular is a great opportunity to be leaders and good role models when ensuring the safety and well-being of everyone around us is a daily priority. There is so much we need to get right to make that happen. As the great John C. Maxwell often remarked, leadership is not about titles or positions. It is about one life influencing another. So as members of the Prefects Council, I want to encourage you to especially get to know the students in the lower years. They need your friendship and your mentorship. And most importantly, they need to be taught how to treat each other with respect. In fact, if there is nothing else you focused on as young leaders, you should make respect central to your mission. Today, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our chief guest for today's function, someone who is respected as one of our country's foremost journalists, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai. He is also a renowned author whose latest book in 2019, How Modi Won India, is a national bestseller. Rajdeep is currently the consulting editor and lead news anchor of the India Today group and has over three decades of journal journalistic excellence in print and television. He was a founder editor of the IBN 18 network, and prior to that, he was the managing editor of, India, of NDTV and was responsible for seeing, overseeing their news policy. He has also worked with the Times of India for six years and was city editor of its Mumbai edition at the age of 26. During his long career in journalism, he has covered major national and international stories, specializing in national politics. He has won more than 50 awards of journalistic excellence, including the pre prestigious Padma Shri for Journalism in 2008, the International Broadcasters Award for coverage of the 2002 Gujarat riots, the Ramnath Goenka Excellence in Journalism Award in 2007, and the 2019 Prem Bhatia Award for Political Journalism for analysis of the 2019 elections. He was the first Indian to win the Asian Television Award for both talk show and news presentations. He has been news anchor of the year for the Indian Television Academy a record 10 times. In 2020, he was conferred with the Lifetime Achievement Award at the annual News Broadcasters Awards. A graduate of St. Xavier's College, he completed his master's in LLB from Oxford University and played first-class cricket also at Oxford. 
Please join me in welcoming our chief guest for this evening, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, and in wishing our new prefix council, led by Mangalam Karapaya and Daivik Satisha, all the very best with their new roles and responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The chief guest, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, will now address the school. Hello and welcome. Namaskar, Namaskaram, Vadakkam, Good Morning, uh, Ram Ram to all the young friends at Good Shepherd International School. As you can see from my introduction, I tried to send you a greeting in different languages and the fact is that my young friends, we live in this wonderful country of 1.3 billion people where there are 15 official languages on the back of a currency road. The Indian constitution recognizes 22 languages and remember there are so many dialects as well. This is a unique subcontinental size country my young friends and therefore I thought I would start by reminding you that we can come from different parts of India from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and yet feel pride in the idea of being Indian. And today I want to speak to you about what it means to be Indian. To my mind, the true badge of being an Indian is about citizenship. It's about our faith in the constitution. You know, there are lots of holy books. Uh, that we read the wonderful Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, the Quran, every religion has its own in a way holy book at times or a book certainly that uh, people of that religion or religious group tend to follow. To my mind, the book that every Indian must follow is the constitution. That is our dharma. That is in a way uh, the book from which we derive our rights as individuals and it's a book that gives us a sense of pride in the idea of India. The idea of uh, we the people, uh, of a republic, of a democratic sovereign republic where the individual matters. It doesn't matter whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Parsi, Jain, Buddha or indeed any religion. What matters uh, is your unshakable faith in the notion of being a good citizen. At the center of our constitution is the individual, our right to free speech, our right to free movement, our right to worship any of the gods that we would wish to, our rights to uh, to marry people of our choice. Our rights in a way are enshrined in our constitution to ensure that the individual gets primacy. That was the vision of the great Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar and all the founding fathers and mothers of our constitution. When they sat down, they recognized that India was a unique society where people from different faiths lived together in different parts of the country. What would unite India? And they recognized that at the heart of being Indian was the notion of us as people, as citizens. And we can contrast that with neighboring Pakistan, where religion became the basis of Pakistani national identity. Islam became the basis of being Pakistani. In India, being an Indian is not about being a Hindu, a Muslim, a Christian, a Sikh, a Jain or indeed any religion. It is about the notion of being a citizen first. And I say this today because I must confess my young friends, when I was growing up in the 1970s in school like you, I never saw my classmates 
through the prism of religion or caste at all. We had in my school in Mumbai people from every community all in one classroom as indeed I am sure you have at the Good Shepherd International School. At the end of the day, if your neighbor is Mohammed or whether his name is Carlos or whether his name is uh, Vishnu, it should not make a difference. Remember the sad truth my young friends is increasingly we get divided. The strength of this country, the strength of you and I, of your classroom is when each and every one of you work unitedly amidst all your diversity. That is what makes India unique, our unity in our diversity and our mutual respect for each other and each other's faiths. If someone wants to go on a Sunday morning to church, he has every right, he or she has every right to do so. If someone wants to read namaz on a Friday, so be it. If someone wants to go to a temple, a Gurdwara, a Jain temple, a Buddhist uh, 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 temple, they have the right. And we run to respect each other. We build a sense of tolerance of the other. Unfortunately, my young friends, society is getting divided in us versus them. Frankly, it's done at times by our politicians. They look at each of us as vote banks. Because they want to win elections. And frankly, elections are done by divide and rule. That's how the British ruled India for so many years. Because they were able to divide us as people, pitting one against the other. And today I am depressed at times to see that that's exactly what the, the new Maharajas, our new rulers tend to do. They tend to divide us because they believe that that is the way to win elections. To be honest, we need to resist that. We need to resist any effort made by anyone out there to divide us on grounds of religion, caste, creed because that weakens us as people. When you go into the outside world, my young friends, you must go with all the ambition and the aspirations of a young India. This is a country with what demographers call the demographic dividend. We are the young, we have the largest young population in the world. And you have great opportunities to fulfill your dreams, whatever you want to do in this world. And I think that in a way, we should take a leaf from our cricket team. Our cricket team to my mind which has done so outstandingly well in recent times is because cricket is meritocratic. It does not matter whether you come from a famous cricketing family. Cricket is based on talent. My father, my young friends played for India for more than a decade. Was the first Indian to score a double century outside India. The only Goan born cricketer to play for India. I also wanted to play the game, much like him. But I recognized that I had my limitations. I just did not have the talent. A politician's son or daughter can become a politician. A businessman's son or daughter can inherit the family business. A doctor or a lawyer's son may also join the father's profession or the mother's profession. But a cricketer who wants to play for India can't play simply because his father or mother, uh, his father or even his mother played cricket for India. At the end of the day, you play on your talent. Arjun Tendulkar, the son of the great Sachin Tendulkar wants to play for India, but he will have to perform on the field. The surname won't do. So sports builds a meritocratic India. It also builds quite remarkably what I call a democratic India that provides equal opportunity. Think about in Tamil Nadu itself, this young boy T Narayan who has become in who played for India in the test match against Australia, the left arm fast bowler, comes from a humble family, a small village near Salem. Today is an international star because he got opportunity. 
And that is really the future. We have to create more opportunities in a competitive environment for the young. Cricket has done that. And most importantly, my young friends, when you go out on the cricket field, it doesn't matter which part of the country or which religion you belong to. When Mohammed Shami or Siraj are bowling from one end, you don't define them by their religious identity. When a Umesh Yadav is playing, you don't define him by his caste identity. They are all 11 proud Indians who are playing for our country. That's what separates them and makes this truly an experiment in unity and diversity. Our cricket team embodies the spirit that our constitution makers had, my friends. And also, I think when we succeeded in Australia, we need to pay tribute to our captain, Ajinkya Rahane, because he showed what it is, even in today's age, to be a leader. To be a leader, you don't need to be aggressive and in your face. Your toughness must come from within, from having the ability to stay calm and composed through good times and bad. You know, one of the wonderful stories of Ajinkya Rahane was when he came back to India, his cooperative society had made a cake, welcome cake, and it had a kangaroo. Ajinkya refused to cut the cake, saying kangaroo is Australia's national animal. I don't want to make the Australians feel bad. That shows a conscientious, humane spirit. My young friends, there is nothing better in life than to be compassionate, to reach out to others. That's what makes us stronger as a people, as humans, as citizens. One last point. I think one of the, one of the strengths again of our cricket team is that they play without fear. You are young, my friends. You have to be fearless. You have to explore new boundaries. You have to find and rediscover, in a sense, your spirit in different ways. Don't allow someone else to, in a way, define your idea of who you are. Have faith in yourself. The X factor of the young Rishabh Pants and the Shubman Gills comes from the self-belief that they have, that they can fire take on the best in the world. And that comes because, unlike in our politics on the cricket field, there are no vote banks. There are no divisions. There is no one who is trying to bring out the worst in us, but cricket and sport brings out the best in us. I want you, each and every one of you, to experience the adventure of life, to treat life as a journey. It's not about reaching a destination. Enjoy the process of learning. None of us are masters at anything when we start off in life. But we keep improving. We keep getting better. I'll tell you the story of the great R.K. Lakshman, the cartoonist. I was his colleague at the Times of India. He was, of course, a legend already by then. He would draw a pocket cartoon every day for almost 50 years. And I asked Mr. Lakshman once, Sir, don't you ever get tired of drawing a cartoon? You've been doing the same cartoon every year for 50 years. And Mr. Lakshman told me, Rajdeep, for every, every cartoon for me is like my first cartoon. Every day I come to office with the excitement and the passion of doing a cartoon today better than the one I did yesterday. A constant process, my young friends, of improving yourselves, of becoming better at what you do of keeping all the noise that is there around us away from us. In a way, we need to become, we need to derive our strength from within, not from what society thinks about us, but how we define our self-image. Then whether you are a doctor, a lawyer, dare I say a gardener, or indeed a technology expert, or any of the millions of professional options that your generation will have, my friends, do it with a sense of pride. Do it with compassion. Do it as with a sense of passion. And do it with empathy. And that, my young friends, will make you better people. In conclusion, let me say this. We've gone through a very turbulent year in the last 12 months. COVID-19 has changed the world in more ways than we can imagine. Many of us have worked from home 
for the last several months. Many of you have not been able to go to school perhaps, enjoy the atmosphere of sitting with your friends or playing in the playground with them. I know you miss that. Being, having that community spirit is very important. But COVID has also taught us the importance of resilience, of innovation, of doing new things, of meeting new challenges. We are learning all the time, my young friends. And remember, there are people much less fortunate than you who have suffered more. Reach out to them. If each and every one of us could reach out to one person who is less fortunate than us, we could build a better world. And that, my young friends, should be our aim. How do we, you and I, together in some ways, build a better world so where the, the gap between the haves and the have-nots reduces? That is the challenge of our times. India is a remarkable country, my young friends. There is no other country like India. People often ask me, would you do journalism anywhere else in the world? And I say, no. Because India is the one country where no two days are the same. Where every day in some part or some corner of the country, some news is breaking. Some news which may depress us, some news which may make us feel happy. We have to go along in this journey of life, my friends, by taking the good times with the bad. And just make an effort to become better people. It doesn't matter whether you are, your goal shouldn't become, be necessarily to be the best as a, as a professional, but even more importantly, to become the best as a human being. That's how we are tested, my friends. Make humanity, in a way, the core of your identity. Let's build a better India. Let's build a better world where we can break all the boundaries that lie ahead of us. To each and every one of you, my young friends, let me take this opportunity to once again wish you all the very best for 2021 and indeed for your future. The world is at your feet, my young friends, at Good Shepherd International School. Become citizens of India and citizens of the world. All the best. Aap sabhi ko meri taraf se shub Go out and conquer the world. Namaskar. Thank you. Dhanyabad. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. The co-founder and senior vice president, Mrs. Elsima Thomas, will now express the school's gratitude to all who have added significance to this occasion. Good evening, everybody. Mr. Jacob Thomas, president. Mrs. Sheila Alexander, principal. Academic council members, parents and guardians, members of the staff and my dear students. I thank you all for being a part of the virtual investiture ceremony of the Prefix Council 2021-22. We are indeed greatly honoured and privileged to have the video message by Mr. Rajsteep Sir Deshai, senior journalist, author and TV news presenter. My sincere thanks to him for taking time off from his very busy schedule to have addressed our students, community and I am sure his message has motivated and inspired each and every one of you. I thank the parents and guardians of the Prefix Council for the year 2021-22 for participating in this virtual function, which is such a momentous occasion in your child's school life. On this occasion, I express my sincere thanks and appreciation to the outgoing Prefix Council for their leadership, excellent teamwork and for carrying out their duties with dedication and commitment during this past unusual year. You have all had to perform tasks and mentor students in a manner 
that no other batch of prefects council members have had to do in the past 44 years my sincere thanks to each of you and heartfelt appreciation for your efforts this ceremony is a very special event that i think everyone in the school should be proud of the prefix should take great pride in having been chosen to represent the school but be humbled by the knowledge that with this position of leadership comes great opportunity to not just lead but to act as role models summon the rest of the students look upon and to aspire to follow your good character hard work your commitment and good works for the betterment of the community as a whole my simple advice to you do not look upon your role as one with great privilege or power but look upon it as one that gives you the opportunity to be more responsible my sincere thanks to mr dominic jude hurst director of activities for give organizing this virtual function my hearty congratulations to the head girl mangalam karpaya and the head boy daivik locheria satisha may god bless all and i wish great success during your year as prefix of the school thank you all we conclude the investiture ceremony with the school anthem
you everyone for your presence and support. Good day.